Fuel pumps are one of the most important, yet also one of the most misunderstood electrical components in your car. If you're trying to decide which fuel pump to fit in your modified or performance vehicle, today we're going to cover some common misconceptions about the humble fuel pump, uh, sizing considerations, how to mount a fuel pump into your vehicle, durability uh, and electrical system considerations. I'm Blake Jones from Bosch Motorsport Australia and today we're going to help you decide which fuel pump is right for you. The use of E85 fuels has increased in popularity in recent years and as a result we've seen a corresponding development in the range of products available in the aftermarket designed to support E85 fuel. There's a few things you do need to be aware of when you uh, convert your vehicle to run E85, however. First of all is chemical compatibility. E85 is a blend of 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline. That's where the name E85 comes from. Ethanol is actually extremely corrosive and destructive. And if a vehicle's fuel system is not designed for use with E85, uh, over time you can actually see a reduction in performance and eventually a complete failure of elements of the fuel system. When Bosch Motorsport introduces an E85 approved pump, you can be sure that the internals have been developed specifically for use with ethanol and have been validated over thousands of hours of OEM level testing. The second thing to be aware of with an E85 fuel pump is fuel volume flow. E85 has less energy content than the corresponding amount of gasoline fuel. As a result, you need to flow more fuel. We've seen that this is somewhere in the range of 30 to 40% more fuel uh, and the effect on that is that you may need to decide to step up a size in fuel pump to make sure that you can actually support your power goals when running E85. This video doesn't cover diesel or methanol fuels. Those are very different considerations. And today we're just gonna be focusing on ethanol based fuels and of course, gasoline. We will cover the physical sizing of a fuel pump later in the video. But for now, let's talk a little bit about flow sizing. After all, that's probably why you're here. Most people upgrading their fuel pumps are increasing the power level of their vehicles, which requires a greater supply of fuel. Simply put, the internal combustion engine's job is to take energy from a combination of air and fuel and release it combustively in the engine to produce power. Now, if you assume an engine is consistently efficient, which it isn't in the real world, but just for argument's sake, that follows that to increase the amount of power produced, you will need to increase the amount of fuel and air introduced into the engine. Then follows to requiring a larger fuel pump to supply your greater fuel requirements. Now, I'm sure you've seen some pumps advertised as 500 horsepower, 800 horsepower pumps, uh, but that's a bit of a simplification about the relationship between the fuel pump's size and the power of the engine. There's many factors that can uh, apply here, including boost level, uh, engine efficiency, and even the voltage supply that's run into the pump. If you want a quick solution for your vehicle, we will be releasing a calculator and the link will be in the description of this video when it's available. If you're interested in understanding the concepts that apply a little bit further, watch on and we'll get stuck into it. A pump's fuel supply is a relationship with two different factors. First of all, you have fuel pressure, which we measure in PSI or KPA. And secondly, you have your fuel volume flow, which is often measured in gallons per hour or liters per hour. To understand this concept, it's easy to think of your garden hose in the backyard. So you turn the tap on, full blast, uh, and what you're initially gonna have at the end of the hose is a high volume flow, but with low pressure. Now, if you were to introduce a restriction by pinching the end of that hose, you're actually gonna reduce the flow, but increase the pressure. The same principle applies in your fuel system. There's various restrictive elements that determine the fuel pressure in your fuel system. Of course, there's the fuel pressure regulator, but there's also other factors such as filters, fuel line diameter, uh, return on the fuel system, and so on. Since the actual amount of fuel injected is primarily controlled by the injector opening time, fuel pressure is ideally a constant, which is set by your tuner or the original equipment manufacturer of the vehicle. Of course, modern race cars will often monitor fuel pressure as an important indicator of uh, engine health and expected performance. This fuel pressure determines the fuel volume that can be delivered in your fuel system. Simply put, the higher the fuel pressure, the lower the volume of fuel that could be delivered is. 
Bosch Motorsport specializes in fuel pumps that can deliver high volumes of fuel, even in high pressure fuel systems. All Bosch pumps have data sheets that map their fuel volume flow rates at different pressures. Now, most commonly these are three, four or five bar, but occasionally go up as high as eight bar. High power vehicles, or those otherwise running ethanol, boost or a combination of the two, might actually find themselves in a situation where a single high flow fuel pump won't be enough. In that case, there's always the option of installing a dual fuel pump system. It's a common misconception that oversizing a fuel pump for an application is always a good thing. It's true that a pump that's maxed out at 100% on the dyno may find itself in a situation where due to environmental factors or simply age of the pump, you may be demanding more fuel at the engine than an older or compromised pump is able to deliver. Oversizing your pump is a good way to protect yourself from a situation where your pump doesn't supply enough fuel, which can lead to leaning out your engine, reducing engine power, and perhaps even creating engine damage. However, something we have encountered quite often are fuel systems that are far too oversized for the application requirements. Uh, and this actually does in introduce some issues into your fuel system as well. First of all, fuel overheating. So in a common fuel system where you have a return back to the fuel pump, uh, an oversized fuel pump will actually be supplying too much fuel, it doesn't get used up by the injectors, passes through the hot fuel rail, absorbing heat uh, from the engine, then running back into the uh, tank where it's uh, you know, then sucked up again. And basically this cycle can repeat and uh, lead to overheating of fuel. The recirculation of hot fuel is a problem for a number of reasons. Firstly, it reduces the effective octane of your fuel by burning off specific hydrocarbons. It also increases the charge temperature, uh, which is a reduction in performance. Uh, and you'll actually see an increase in emissions as well. So all things that we want to avoid when we're setting up a fuel system in a car. Secondly is fuel overpressure. Uh, in a system without the correct amount of pressure regulation, you can actually see a situation where pressure increases above the designed um, amount, which can lead to excessive amounts of fuel being injected through the fuel rail uh, and could actually lead to a dangerous situation where your fuel lines are overpressured and you can actually see failure of fuel lines, fittings and so on with a burst. So here at Bosch Motorsport, we say the optimal fuel pump is sized around 10% above the maximum fuel requirements for your application. We call this the safety margin and it's a nice way to ensure you're not oversizing your pump, but also allowing a little bit of wiggle room for those situations where more fuel might be required than on the dyno. An external fuel pump like this was once the default choice for anyone building a high performance vehicle. Uh, more recently, we've seen the surge in popularity of high performance in-tank pumps, such as this Bosch BR540. Now, why is that? Well, once you put a pump inside the tank, uh, a lot of the componentry and a lot of the noises associated with running that pump are actually contained inside the tank. So less noise, less fumes, uh, and overall a more kind of street friendly and comfortable cabin to be in. Of course, there's still a lot of popularity um, for these inline pumps. Uh, in particular, if you've converted a car from carburetor to EFI, um, of course, if it had an inline pump fitted from factory, or if your tank's small and you can't actually run, you know, three or four of these in tank, which we do see from time to time, uh, in those cases, you are still going to absolutely prefer an inline pump. So this one I have here, uh, this is what we call the Bosch Motorsport 200 pump. And this is actually a replacement for the 044. Uh, the Bosch Motorsport 044 fuel pump is probably the most well-known inline fuel pump of all time. Um, this is an upgraded version, it's E85 approved, flows a little bit higher, um, it's a little bit quieter as well, so um, it's been quite a popular alternative to the old 44. When we're talking in-tank pumps, uh, Bosch Motorsport offers a range of different diameters to fit a number of um, popular OEM and aftermarket hanger sizes. So um, I've got two examples here, this is our 100 pump. Uh, flows 225 litres per hour. Uh, this has a 38 millimetre body, which is fantastic for a lot of uh, 90s Japanese performance cars that we know and love. 
Um, if that doesn't flow enough, you can step up to something like the BR540. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, comes in at 46 millimeters, um, but that's a direct fit for a lot of uh, aftermarket fuel hangers. You'll see here, we've got a radium twin hanger, fits the 46 millimeter body of the BR540, um, and a few other examples down there, one from French's Performance Garage um, for the Skyline. Um, so basically, for in pump or in line, when it comes to physical sizing, Bosch Motorsport has something that's going to fit any size of holder. So you might have noticed this sleeve on the 200 pump, uh, which does make it look a little bit different to the 044. It's actually completely removable. This has two functions. So first of all, it helps it fit into an existing bracket for an 044. Uh, and secondly, because it's slightly rubberized, it actually helps reduce vibrations. And reducing vibrations with your fuel pump mount is actually quite an important topic. What we see is that most fuel pumps aren't actually killed in race cars by poor quality fuel or voltage damage or um, something getting through the filter. It's actually vibrations. Um, so limiting the vibration of where your fuel pump's mounted with a simple rubber sleeve uh, or some sort of rubber isolation is really important simply to prevent the vibrations, the shakes and bumps coming up through your chassis or you know, through your engine into the fuel pump. Um, these things actually have very precision engineered internals, um, which can be quite sensitive to vibration over time, especially if you're running something like ethanol fuel through them. Um, so a definite improvement there for a lot of installs that we see. So your fuel pump is actually one of the hardest working electrical devices in your car. And if you're upgrading from a smaller standard pump to something bigger, you need to ensure that the amp and voltage draw from the pump doesn't actually overwhelm other electrical components. Bosch Motorsport supplies data sheets for all of its fuel pumps, which allows you to then evaluate if other elements of your electrical system relating to the fuel pump are up to the task. A high flow fuel pump without sufficient gauge wiring can actually overheat and melt electrical connectors and wires themselves, uh, which is obviously a very dangerous situation that you want to avoid in your race car. Uh, you should also ensure that your battery and your alternator are up to the task of delivering the amps required. If they're not, your fuel pump will not be able to supply the amount of fuel that you may require. By measuring the voltage and amp output of your system and ensuring that your wiring connectors are up to spec, you can understand the expected flow of your fuel pump and operate it safely. So with specific equipment, it is actually possible to control the output of your pump by influencing the voltage. So you might've heard of PWM control. Well, this means pulse width modulation and basically you're switching on and off at a very, very rapid rate, the voltage supply to the pump, which over time has the effective impact of reducing the voltage seen at the pump and thus reducing the amount of fuel supplied. So there's been a few OEM applications of this and we are seeing an increasing amount of uh, applications in the aftermarket. You do need to make sure that your pump is able to be PWM controlled. So that's something that should be listed in the data sheet. Uh, and of course you'll need the PWM controller and a tuner that is actually able to, um, to program that correctly for you. As we've already discussed, a lower voltage will reduce the fuel volume flow rate as well. So what this allows you to do is say, run a nice big BR540 at 30% uh, flow volume at idle, and then you can ramp it up to 100% at full throttle. Um, this avoids those earlier, you know, oversizing issues we talked about, where you might be overheating your fuel um, and creating more ampage draw that you really require. Um, so that's some of the benefits of PWN control. Of course, a little bit more complicated, there's additional equipment required. Um, so of course, that's something you need to discuss with your tuner. A quality pump is one you never need to think about. You simply install it and it runs race weekend after race weekend. Now, there's a lot of brands out there that claim to manufacture high performance fuel pumps, but uh, what makes Bosch Motorsport pumps a little bit different? Well, Bosch Motorsport's been in the business uh, pretty much as long as anyone. Um, the original mass market electric, electronically fuel injected fuel pump was a Bosch invention. Each of these fuel pumps is precision engineered. Uh, they're individually balanced inside. Obviously there's a um, turbine in there that spins at very, very high speed. Um, so those are individually balanced. Um, we've got a polymer encased armature, um, which reduces the noise as well. Buying Bosch, you get the OEM level of validation as well. So 
the testing for each of these pumps uh, is in the thousands or tens of thousands of hours. Um, of course, the ethanol compatibility that I mentioned before, sour fuel, um, we've got vibration testing, hot weather, cold weather testing, um, so on and so forth, which uh, just gives you a lot of confidence that once it's installed in the race car, it's something you don't necessarily need to think about again. Bosch fuel pumps also represent exceptional value um, due to the fact that we do manufacture so many OEM fuel pumps. Uh, the scale that we can make these at actually ends up at a very good price point as well. So today we've discussed um, a range of different fuel pumps, uh, everything from inline to in-tank and multiple fuel pumps and so on. Um, of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or you can jump across to boschmotorsportshop.com.au uh, and check out some of the products that we've discussed today. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today. We will have more educational content coming soon. So uh, we'll see you next time.